Hi everybody, this is Redekai Toby, the community manager for the official Redekai community at redekai.com. We're here today to teach you all about how to play Redekai. Uh, as you may have heard over the last few months, Redekai is the hottest game that's coming out this year, the hottest TCG. It's got Blast 3D technology on all cards, which means that monster cards such as this guy here animate and are in 3D, as do attack cards. They also animate as well. So there's been a lot of talk about how awesome this technology is, how, how uh, remarkably innovative it is. And while it's all well and good, uh, there's also a great game that goes along with it. I'm um, here with uh, Justin Gary. Justin Gary is a, a TCG lifer, much like I am. Uh, he's been around quite a while. He's a TCG world champion, TCG national champion, and he actually uh, helped design the Redekai game engine. So we're here to teach you how to play the basic game and the advanced game. Awesome. Thanks, Toby. I, I gotta tell you, I'm real excited to finally be able to get to show off the game. Um, everybody's been able to see the cards by now. Hopefully, they're gorgeous. They're really cool. But what I've been able to do working with the team here has been to make a game that actually is better for having used this technology. And we use stackable gameplay to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the very basic game, which actually is designed that five and six-year-olds can play. You can actually play the game out of a single pack of cards. Take, and then show you how those mechanics evolve into an advanced game that's going to appeal to everybody in us life TCGs yeah. uh, <laughs> as well. Uh, so we're going to start you off, you can help me hold this here, yep. um, start you off with your basic character card. It has your defenses, um, in this case 300 green defense, it has your full health bar, all three of those are in yellow. Um, when those turn to red, you get knocked out of the game, just like in a video game. To do damage to you, I'm going to play attacks, like Fire Tornado here. Fire Tornado is a green attack, you know that because you see it's color green, it has 750 power. Whenever I attack you, I compare my power and color to the same power and color on your defenses. You have 300 green defense, my 750 is higher than that, which means it's a hit. When I hit you, I layer the attack on top. And you can immediately visually see what happens. First thing that happens is you can see when you tilt the card what it looks like that he gets attacked. The yellow bars turn to red, so you can see two of those yellow bars are turned to red. He's already very mostly damaged, very badly burned. And the art on the card runs right over the edge here, so it's actually blocked out his defenses. So he's actually completely defenseless now to any future attacks. But don't worry, Boomer's going to have a little help. We're going to transform him into a monster. In this case, we've got Infinita, a very powerful monster here. Uh, whenever you draw a monster card, you can play it on your own character. So when you play Infinita on Boomer, again, visually, you'll immediately see what happens. Uh, one of those damage that he'd taken has now been healed, so he's back down to only one damage. And his defenses have not only come back, but they've gotten much stronger. Uh, this is a 700 combined green defense. So Boomer's now right back in the action, and you can have a very exciting swingy game based on that. Unfortunately for Boomer, uh, I was prepared for this and uh, have a Borealis Blast, which is a 350 red attack. Boomer has chosen to focus only on green defenses, so without any red defenses at all, Borealis Blast is an immediate hit, which will then go and hit and put him back to damage, and also has the effect of once again blocking out his defenses, which make him vulnerable to my final attack, Laser Sting, which at 650 green would not have been enough to take him out before, but because I blocked his defenses, I can now hit, cover him up, turn all of his damage zones to red, and knock him out of the game. And that's all I need to do to win the game. I'll have a character, you'll have a character. If I'm the first one to turn all your zones into red, you're out of there. And all the stuff that I talked through, the damage zones, the defenses, all that stuff's tracked for you based on the stackable technology using these awesome cards. And then I can take all of that and turn it into the advanced game with just a few more steps to show you where the extra depth of strategy and extra excitement is going to keep people coming in this game for years to come. Sounds awesome. Let's uh, check out the advanced game next. So I want to take those same principles that I just showed you when we talked about the basic game and show you how they evolve and play a couple quick turns of the advanced game to show you where the depth comes in. First thing you'll notice is instead of having one character per team, you can see we've got three characters per team. I've got the uh, three hero characters from the show, Kai, Boomer, and Maya. And uh, Toby's got some villains here, Zane, Zare, and Tekris. Um, now, in addition to the stats that we already showed you, which is the defensive stats that each character has and their health bar, um, now you'll also notice each character has special text powers that are relevant um, in the advanced game, as well as a lot of other cards, both the attacks and monsters. Um, and we'll talk more about those as we get through uh, into actual gameplay. Um, another key distinction is that we now have these really cool hand shields here, um, which are designed to protect our hand of cards. You start with a hand of three cards. Every turn you're going to draw an additional card, and of course there are some abilities that let you draw extra cards. This gives you a lot of choices now, because now you have the ability to not only choose which cards you want to play, but also which character you want to play it on. Which monster is going to be the most efficient for which character, which attack is going to be the best on your guys. So there's a lot more choices to make. 
Finally, one of the other major differences is that now instead of just being able to play any card you draw, you now have Kairu Energy. And we're actually tracking Kairu Energy if you want to show people on this really cool little counter that's built into our hand shields. Um, that shows you your maximum Kairu Energy and how much you spend. So every turn you're going to get an extra maximum Kairu Energy and you can spend them to play the cards out of your hand. You'll notice the cards in your hand all have a cost in the upper left hand corner. It tells you how much Kairu Energy they cost. Higher cost cards are more powerful and that becomes an important resource as the game goes on. So those are the basic things you need to know to move from the basic game to the advanced game. I'm going to take the first turn and show you a couple turns to show you how things go. First thing I do is I increase my maximum Kairu. We all start at three, so I'm going to advance up to four. And I draw a card off the top of my deck. Add it to my hand. Now I'm going to spend that Kairu to play one of my attacks. And the attack I'm choosing to play here is Electric Crush. Uh, it's a 450 blue attack. Uh, I'm going to choose to attack uh, Zayr here in the middle, or Zayn rather. Um, that, uh, since 450 blue, he only has 300 red defense, no blue defense whatsoever. This is going to hit him. But in addition to hitting him and doing damage, the attack has a special ability. That says whenever it hits, your opponent has to discard a card. So, that's since I've hit a, you... Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. I haven't even started yet, but I have to discard a card. So, I'm um, looking at what I've got. Uh, I've got two three cost uh, Kairu attacks, which I can definitely start using soon. The seven cost guy is going to take a bit longer, so I think I'm going to discard the seven cost Kairu attack as I can't use it for the next few turns. All right, and puts it aside into a discard pile. Um, now I've spent all my Kairu for the turn, so though I would like to continue beating up you, uh, I think I will have to uh, pass the turn and go ahead, and you can take your first turn. Okay. So when my turn starts, I gain one more Kairu. Now I have four total. I will draw a card. And let's see what I'm gonna do. Um, I definitely want to send an attack his way. So I'm gonna spend three Kairu, and I'm gonna use Anti-Matter Beam. It's got a 450 red attack. I think what I'll do is I'll target this towards Kai. Kai's got 300 red defense, I've got 450. So that will layer on top, mm -hmm. and that will hit Kai's top space over there, his uh, top damage. Boo. All right, so I have taken damage, but fortunately his attack didn't have any special power, so all I've done is take the damage. And then, uh, is that all you got? Yeah, that's all I got. All right, so on my turn, I increase my maximum Kairu by one, up to five, and I can recharge on my Kairu so it's ready to spend. Uh, I draw an additional card. Uh, now I want to play a little bit more defensively, and I'm gonna think about playing, uh, playing a monster card. So I'm gonna spend two Kairu to play Metanoid. Now when I decide which character I want to play Metanoid, I want to walk you through a couple of the decisions that I'm looking at. Um, all of these characters have special powers. In this case, Maya has a power that when I play a monster on her, I get to draw a card. So if I'm looking for an extra card, that's a really great option for me. It gives me a lot of choices. Kai actually has a special power with Metanoid, because Metanoid's his favorite monster in the cartoon. When you play a Metanoid on him, you get to use his activated ability once per turn without paying its Kairu cost. Now, Metanoid has this really cool power that is uh, six Kairu, and I can use this ability as many times as I want, as long as I have the Kairu on, uh, available, to flip the top card of my deck, and if it's an attack, I can play it without paying its cost. Um, so this is a little bit of a gamble if I want to see if the attack card is a big attack. If I play it on Kai, then I can get a boost for you right now and get a free attack. Or if I want to play more of a long game, I might transform into Maya and see what happens. Uh, I'm a bit of a gambling man myself, so I'm going to put Metanoid onto Kai, which will then let me immediately use its ability for free using Kai's special power and flip the top card of my deck. And also, how lucky! How lucky! How lucky! A boulder toss is a very big, very powerful attack, which normally I'd have to spend six for. Um, but since I don't have to, it can do two damage zones and hits the two bottom damage zones. So now I can pick which character I want to hit, and I could hit any of them. But since Zane's already taken damage in his top zone, I'm actually going to play it on him for sure, because that means he gets wiped out immediately, knocked out of the game. His powers are no longer on, and I'm already one third of the way to winning. So, haha. -ha. Ready to roll. Got lucky on my got lucky, lucky on my flip. All that plus you have extra defense on your Metanoid. Exactly, as well, right? and you'll you'll notice Metanoid since it's Kai's favorite monster actually stacks his powers very very well. Um, he actually has 600 re combined red defense and 300 blue defense. If I'd played Metanoid on somebody else, it would have covered up some of their defenses and made them still stronger, but not as strong as playing it on Kai. So I'm well defended. I've knocked out one of your guys. I'm um, sure you'll be able to make a comeback on your next turn though. Why don't that's, you that's a really good turn too. Uh, okay, so I'm going to start my next turn. I got five Kairu, and I struggle to kind of make something happen here. Draw my next card. Uh, let's see what I've got here. Um, I'm going to spend three of my Kairu, and I'm going to play Blizzard Blades, 450 attack. Um, I'm going to try to take down Boomer. 
and hit the middle space here. All right, so now Toby here is playing the uh, Blizzard Blades. 450 green is higher than my 300 green defense, so it would normally be a hit. However, you'll notice I didn't spend all my Kairu last turn. And sometimes that's pretty good to do for a strategic reason. In this case, I'm going to spend my remaining three Kairu now on Toby's turn to play a React card. Um, this is actually one of the new things that uh, the advanced game lets you have. Um, it's built into a lot of the cards you already have. So if you look at a basic attack uh, like Psychic Cage, it has a React power that says React and the Kairu cost that's associated with it. By spending three and discarding this card, I can give all my characters plus 300 defense in all colors this turn. So it's a quick boost that I can use to react to what he's doing. So now, instead of his Blizzard Blades being a 450 against my 300 green, it's a 450 against my 600, which means it's a miss. It does nothing. So you get to put this into your discard pile along with that other card I made you discard. The react I spent goes to my discard pile. And I've pretty much undone his second turn. Uh, so we've shown you a little bit about how to play the game. That's just two turns that we've played through. You can see there's a lot of decisions, a lot of reacting, a lot of different ways you can do it. When you actually build your deck, tons of different synergies you can put together. Um, so I really look forward to getting you out there to be able to actually play your own games, build your own decks, really see what goes on. But hopefully you've gotten a glimpse into where that simple game mechanic we taught you in the basic gameplay can evolve into an advanced and interesting game that we can play and I can beat Toby up all day long. Ah, <laughs> next time. Thanks. Appreciate all right. it. My pleasure.